Can you think a thought for which you have no words? I don't know either, but I do know that you can't use a tactic for which you have no technique. If strategy is the why, and tactics is the what and the when, then technique is the how. Without technique, there is no tactics, there is no strategy. Technique is the fighter's alpha and omega. It's where we start when we don't know anything, and the more we know, the more we keep coming back to it. When you get in a jam, like as not, it's going to be basic techniques that'll save you. Now, in my own Saldarm, students only cross blades under my direct supervision. And I don't allow anyone to do that unless I know that they're going to be a safe, courteous, and competent opponent. Not brilliant, not even excellent, just competent. And by that I mean they have a reliable command of a few basic techniques. Reliable command means that their skill will not be overwhelmed by their flinch. At the very least, they have to be able to parry cart, parry sixth, parry contre de sixth. They have to be able to attack correctly, that is, arm fully extended before the initiation of the lunge. They have to be able to repost and counter repost straight and by disengage. Now again, that's, that's just the bare minimum beginning level technique. If you, can't, if you can't do those things, you have absolutely no business crossing blades with anybody. If you want to compare fencing to English literature, this would be the equivalent of um, Dick and Jane and Spot. But, you know, you have to start someplace. Technical excellence means efficiency in action. It means using the least amount of movement in the least amount of time, with the least expenditure of energy and with the least amount of risk. Harmoniously integrated movement, smooth, connected, coherent. All excellent fighters do that. The question is, how do you get to be excellent? <laughs> well, <clears throat> you need three things, desire, knowledge, and effort. Let me tell you a little side story. I, uh, I, ha I had this job as a short order cook at a Fred Harvey's on the tollway back in the day. And uh, there was an old cat who washed dishes there. And uh, on his breaks, he'd slip out, have a smoke, and he, he'd play this, this old guitar on his break. And uh, I happened to be taking a break at the same time as him one time. and. Uh, so I caught him and I had a smoke with him and I listened to him play and he played real good. He played real good. So, you know, we got into talking about music and he's been, he started playing the blues when he was a little kid. And uh, here he is, well, not a little kid anymore. And he's still playing, still getting a gig once in a while, still stepping out, still doing it. And I, th I said, uh, I asked him, I said, what, what is it that keeps you going, man? After all this time, why do you still do it? And, uh, and he says to me, do you breathe? <laughs> I said, yeah, I, I breathe. And he said, you breathe because it's going to make you money? I said, no. He said, you breathe because it's going to make you famous? I said, no. He said, why do you breathe? And I said, if I don't breathe, I'll die. <laughs> and he says, uh, you got it, kid. So your art, whatever it is, your art, whether martial or otherwise, I think it's not something you choose. 
I think it's something that chooses you. And once it does, you can't not do it. You can't not do it. If you don't do it, you'll die. Or you might as well you know, shuffle around like one of the other zombies. And of course, the other zombies will think you're cool. If you want to make the trip to Cold Mountain, you're going to need a map. Now, you could buy one at the gas station for a buck, and it'll tell you the names of the roads. But it's a whole lot better to find someone who's made the trip a couple of dozen times. They can tell you the names of the roads, but also where the stretches of bad road are, where the deer like to cross and the antelope play. They can tell you where the speed traps are. They can tell you about that diner off of Exit 4 the one with the great biscuits and gravy. A good teacher can make all the difference. They don't just have theoretical knowledge, they have direct knowledge from their own experience. Now you can try teaching yourself, which is a lot like representing yourself in court. You know what they say, you have a fool for a client and an idiot for a lawyer. Teaching yourself by trial and error might work for some things, especially things that don't matter much. You know, maybe something like needlepoint, but probably not handling high explosives. And how much time do you want to spend reinventing the wheel? When I was a kid, I taught myself to play guitar. Years later, I took some lessons, and I was amazed to learn some guitar secrets. Did you know you don't have to blow into it? So my advice is get yourself a good teacher, if you can find one. There are a lot of self-taught teachers out there. Today, everybody who's ever seen a push-up is a fitness coach. But good teachers? So how do you know whether you're on the true path or on the highway to hell? <laughs> Check and see if you're in a handcart. You have to continually ask yourself, why am I doing it this way? How do I know what I think I know? Why do I believe what I believe? Am I being guided by reason or driven by emotion? Is my practice based on fact? Is it rational and logical? Or is it mindlessly entrenched in tradition or novelty, popularity or authority? Don't let these questions go unanswered. And don't let your answers go unquestioned. Look, if it was easy, everybody would do it. They don't, because it ain't. Effort comes in two flavors, doing and not doing. Now, doing means doing whatever it takes to achieve your goal. Little by little, in small increments, you improve. That's Kaizen, you know. Plukier moi de main. Day by day. Not doing means you must be willing to give up everything that prevents you from achieving your goal. Of the two, not doing is a lot harder than doing. It's easy to eat the steak. It's harder not to eat the apple pie. <laughs> but a lousy diet isn't the only thing you have to give up. You have to give up your bullshit. You have to give up every self-sabotaging belief that stands between you and your goal. Some of those beliefs might not seem negative. Maybe somebody told you you were Tuesday's child, so full of grace that every little thing you did was just so perfect. You were so cute, so talented. You got a medal just for showing up. And people chewed your food for you. Now you think everything should come easy for you. You should get whatever you want just because you want it. You shouldn't have to work for anything. And as soon as it starts to look like work, you quit. Maybe somebody told you that you were Thursday's child with a long, long ways to go before you'd ever be any good. You're too short, too fat, too slow, too young, too old, too weak, too poor. 
You got bad knees, a bad back, a bad history, a broken heart. You turn every puny little flaw into a deal breaker. You get so damn good at making excuses, you never get good at anything else. I understand, Daddy-O. Been there, done that. But to accomplish your goal, you're going to have to 86 all that shit. You're going to have to swap out that old negative self-concept for a new one. Now, I'm not suggesting you pretend to be something you're not. I'm suggesting you imagine the best possible version of yourself that you could ever be. And then be it. Excellence is merely a matter of regular, consistent, correct, mindful practice over a long period of time. You knew I was going to say that, right? Because <laughs> everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. So if everybody knows that, if everybody knows how to be excellent, why aren't we all excellent? What gets in the way? Fear. Some people say laziness. I disagree. I think laziness is the symptom. The disease is fear. Fear also comes in two flavors, fear of failure and fear of success. Failure, shame, loss of social status, loss of reputation, loss of your career, loss of breeding options. We don't want to be seen as less than in the eyes of those whose opinions we care about. The thing is, you can't get to success without failures. I know that before I can play the horn like Chet, I'm going to have to squeak out a lot of clams. At sea, you very rarely sail in a straight line. You can't sail directly into the wind. You sail in a zigzag. They call it tacking. You get to your destination, but you spend a lot of time going in the wrong direction. Let's face it, before you find a handsome prince, you're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs. There's only one way to do it. Suck it up and pucker up. Face the dragon, fight the giant. Even if you do fail, you know, getting knocked out is a hell of a lot closer to victory than never getting in the ring. In the movie, Rocky, he says, I know I can't beat him. But I can go the distance with him. Nobody's ever done that. Sometimes you win when you fight. Sometimes it's a win just to go the distance. The flip side of fear of failing is fear of falling. Part of you feels like, I don't really deserve all this praise. I'm just me. When they find out it was just a fluke, <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Feeling like an imposter is a very common thing. Maybe it's a good thing. It keeps you from being overwhelmed by your own bullshit. Just keep doing what you do and do it the best you can, though the heavens fall. When you're the champ, everybody wants your belt. Now you have to defend it. You have to meet a higher standard now. Gee, what if I can't? Well, you can't. <laughs> Nobody's 100%, 100% of the time, forever. Sooner or later, we all fall. And the torch will be passed on to a new champion. Your success will attract detractors like sharks to blood. They hate your success because they don't have any. You're a living reminder that they never put in the work never took the chance, never got in the ring, and they don't much like being reminded. They live to see you fail. These folks are going to put you down no matter who you are or what you do. You know, my dad, my dad gave me some real good advice about that. He said, um, fuck them. I concur. Anyway, fear won't keep you from dying but it'll sure as hell keep you from living. Do the thing that brings you joy. Find the joy in whatever you do. 
or go do something else. Technique alone won't get you anywhere. You need tactics and you need strategy, but the scope of your tactics and strategy will always be limited to the range of your technique. As we said in the beginning, so we say at the end. Technique, tactics, and strategy. They work together, or not at all.